ability to say. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Folks, you have to fundamentally understand the truth. If you cannot, in 2024, answer that question, you are unfit for office. Hi, my name is Reese Waters. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the page. And if you have any nominees, leave them in the comments or email me at Reese at ReeseWaters.com. And shout out to all my new members that have joined the channel. That's right, we got membership now. More on that later in the video. But this is Who Raised Y'all? Where we highlight those specific individuals doing their part to make our country worse. You know, the kind of people that'll be asking to speak to the manager at the pearly gates. And today's nominee, actually we have a few. Let's start with CBS News. So you mean to tell me that you had J.D. Vance, the VP nominee, the guy who wrote the foreword for a book for one of the authors of Project 2025, and shout out to my member for keeping me straight on that. You had that guy answering questions for almost two hours, and you don't ask him about Project 2025? Hmm? Is that what we just did? We just sat through two hours of questioning, and you don't ask him about the project to reshape American life that touches on most of the questions that you did ask. Is that what I just sat through? Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Did you just have a debate with J.D. Vance after weeks of him demonizing the immigrant community in his own state without asking him about the cats and dogs comments, huh? Is that what we did? Is that what we did? Did we make him not have to answer for inciting domestic terrorism in his own state? As a matter of fact, we didn't have any questions specifically related to black people at all. I wonder exactly how that happened because obviously they wouldn't be affected by that characterization of brown immigrants. Stop it. Get some help. How about the fact that that Ohio, his home state, was something he was willing to sacrifice for a racist dog whistle. In fact, Governor Walls brought up Ohio more than J.D. Vance did. If he's willing to sell his own state down the river for his own political gain, I don't know, that might speak to the character of a person. You know, the kind of person that likened the presidential nominee to the leader of 1930s and 40s Germany, that kind of person. I must have missed the part where they asked J.D. Vance about his plans for the purge. I must, I must have missed that because Trump had advocated for the one violent night and the one violent hour, and they didn't ask him about that at all. I must, I must have missed that. You know, if you had one day, like one real rough, nasty day with the drugstores as an example. Because regardless of how big and bold the ideas of the VP might be, if the presidential nominee talking about the purge, then we doing the purge. Yeah, unlike how they try and characterize Kamala Harris, uh, the VP actually does not have power to override the president's plans. In fact, Marcus could have told you that. He's already, he's already upset about it. The vice president being in office for all these years and not being able to make the change was the allegation from J.D. Vance. You said to me, I've been to high school civics class. Why did you say that? Because if anybody took high school civics class, they'd know what the vice president can do and what the vice president can do. I want to make a quick point. Neither candidate on that stage talked about what executive action they're going to take on day one to do what they want, nor were they asked because they know that they can't. That's not how the vice presidency works. You don't get to do what you want. You do what the president delegates you to do. 
Which is a curious thing, because somehow in 2016, Hillary Clinton was responsible for the 94 crime bill. In 2020, Biden was responsible for the 94 crime bill. And now in 2024, Kamala responsible for everything that Biden did. But, but Trump ain't responsible for even the words that come out of his own mouth. Five seconds out of, for Donald Trump, an hour speech. I think a lot of times people say, oh, well, he said this. For five seconds, yes, he says he says things that are unscripted. He goes off the cuff, off the cuff. He's not serious. There's no policy behind that. But I think where the American people truly are is they at least want to hear what somebody is thinking. Now, I mean, I was a bit nervous going into the VP debate because J.D. Vance isn't as unhinged as Donald Trump is. He is the kind of person that was bred and trained to excel in these kinds of environments. You have somebody who's a seasoned pro at trying to come off a specific kind of way, which does not necessarily speak to the kind of person that he is, but the kind of person he wants you to think that he is. And you have him debating with a genuine human being. Even, even Van Jones saw exactly what this was. He lied the entire night. He lied about American energy production, which is up. He said it's down. He lied about health care. He said Donald Trump saved Obamacare. You have to be literally I was on, on Capitol Hill. Right. He didn't. I want to talk about that when you're done. Um, um, he lied about the insurrections. He said we had a, a peaceful transfer of power. He lied. He said he never supported a national abortion ban. He is he, Donald Trump is the gaslighter in chief, and this is his loyal lieutenant who came out here to try to, to, to polish up the crazy. And I think Americans need to be very, very careful. This is a very, very deceptive guy. And just as when you have a genuine human being who's debating with somebody with the slick and polish of a J.D. Vance, it's going to be some bumps in the road. I mean, it was it was it was some bumps in the road. So I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Just roll the next clip. Just roll the next clip. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just... Stop talking, Tim. That's what I've said. Stop talking, coach. So I was in. Coach, 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 stop talking. Hong Kong and China during the democracy protests went in. And from that, I learned a lot of what needed to be in, in governance. It's like the difference between interviewing for a job and actually doing the job. You know those people that, that interview well, they, they're always great on a first date. They just can't keep a job or a relationship going. That's J.D. Vance, because we know how Vance is going to do the job. What can we do about lowering the cost of daycare? Hayden, obviously a working family, and it's very hard for working families to get by. How will we lower the cost of daycare? Yeah, you know, such an important question, Charlie. And I think one of the things that we can do is make it easier for family models to choose or for families to choose whatever model they want, right? So one of the ways that you might be able to relieve a little bit of pressure on people who are, who are paying so much for daycare is make it so that, that, you know, maybe like grandma or grandpa wants to help out a little bit more. But while he's interviewing for the job? That's the heart of the economic proposal. And I think what President Trump is saying is that when we bring in this additional revenue with higher economic growth, we're going to be able to provide paid family leave, child care options that are viable and workable for a lot of American families. Can you clarify how that will solve the child care shortage? Oh, you're not going to get a straight answer nowhere. What would you tell me is your biggest weakness? You know what? I love too hard. I, I love too hard. And, and I care too much. And you know, the reason for that is uh, Kamala Harris immigration policy. Shout out to my member. I think it was Matt who uh, in the live stream yesterday said it was like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but with immigrants. That's exactly what that was. And it occurred to me, how is it that MAGA is able to simultaneously swallow Trump because he is so different and just says what he means. And he's somebody that we feel like he can trust as off-putting and off base as that might be. Uh, he's somebody that is the antithesis of a slick, polished politician. They can somehow simultaneously swallow Trump and J.D. Vance, who is the epitome of all of those things that they say that they hate. It's almost like they have no integrity. You know, speaking of MAGA, 
Well, the moderators were obnoxious um, and made it feel like three on one on Vance. Hasn't Megan Kelly gotten a foul mouth lately? F you, Taylor Swift, and F all of the people. I mean, really, she, she acts like a kid who just learned how to cuss. Oh, I could say that? Oh, wow. And then everybody pays attention when I say that, too. F you. It's like she purchased a MAGA for Dummies book off of Amazon, and she's operating off of the first and second chapter. F you. I do wonder, though, like, why they why they so why they so mad is is that how is that because they had to cut his mic illegal immigration margaret by thank our you own senator for describing the legal and process and we have so much Harris to get to senator pathway. those we laws have, so have been much... on the book since 1990. thank you gentlemen the, the, the we want to have app has not been on the books it's since 1990. it's something that Kamala Harris created margaret. <laughs> gentlemen you the audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. We have so much we want to get to. Thank you for explaining the legal process. Nora. Thank you, Margaret. And yes, thank you for explaining the legal process is going to make its way into a number of disagreements all throughout the fall and winter. I can tell you this, they probably should have cut his mic way more than they did. They could have cut his mic when he blamed the gun problem on mental health. They could have cut his mic when he blamed the gun problem on immigrants. They could have cut his mic when he blamed the gun problem on childless teachers. Okay, he, he didn't actually, he didn't actually say that last part, but if they didn't cut his mic, I bet he was going to. They did, did great. Um, they did a great job and they also used their mic muting powers. Once, yeah. And I actually yeah. think if you're a woman, that might be the, the worst moment J.D. Vance had because he was going to mansplain right over that mute button. Um, he was, uh, and again, I don't pretend to know how everyone will react to this. I think that a lot of women um, in positions of authority that should command respect just by virtue of that dynamic will see themselves and some do the disrespect of them and talked over. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there was a moment like that with, with the vice presidential in the hair uh, Pence debate where she said I'm speaking mm -hmm. I mean, there is this real belief that what he had to say was more important than the debate rules and the moderator now these were my takeaway moments from the vice presidential debate number one thank you governor and just to clarify for our viewers Springfield Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status right. Temporary protected status. Well, Mar 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 Nora, but, but thank you, no, Senator. No, we have no, no, so much to get to. Mar Margaret, I, I think it's important the, because we're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you, Margaret. The, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. Oh, that must be why Fox News was mad because because of that one time that they fact checked. Status. Well, Mar 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 Nora, but, but thank you, no, Senator. No, we have no, no, so course. much to get to. Margaret, I, I think it's important the, because we're going to turn out the, of the, the economy. Debate, thank you, Margaret. The rules were that you guys weren't going to fact check. This reminds me of a not at all biographical story. Uh, let's just say that you stole some books from the Capitol Heights Elementary School Library in 1991. And you're so excited about those books that you're in the back of the bus and you're just flipping through and, and can't wait to get home and explore all the rest of what you got in your book bag. You got everything spread out on the seat and you lose track of where you are. All of a sudden you look up and you realize it's your stop. So you jump up and you run off the bus only to realize once you've gotten off the bus, you've left all of the books splayed across the seats of the back of the bus. Now, there's a number of options that you have in that situation. You can think about how you can re-up and, and go back into the library for another caper. Um, you could beat yourself up and, and talk about all the, all the ways in which your plan went wrong. What you can't do, what you can't do is go to the bus driver and complain that you left your books on the back of the bus. Why? Cause you stole them from the library. So you mean to tell me that y'all are mad that he got fact checked and not mad that he lied? So you're basically willingly seeding your plan to lie with impunity. That is what you're doing by virtue of your complaints, 
What you're telling me is we should have the right to lie with impunity. Is that what you're trying to communicate? Because that's what you are communicating. And by the way, while we're on the topic of fact check, he said there were 25 million undocumented immigrants in the country. It's probably more like 15, 16. He said that the he, he, he repeatedly lied about Springfield again yep. and yeah. did it so insistently that he had to have his mic muted because he kept trying to jump in and continue yep. to lie about these people. He said they were brought in through something called the CBP-1 app, um, and that is an app that immigrants can use to come in and get a certain kind of visa. That was launched in 2020 under drumroll, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. He says that he never supported a national abortion ban. I have here a printout that is already circulating all over social media. Uh, this, is from the cam this is from the campaign yes. website of J.D. Vance when he ran for the United States Senate. It is headlined, End Abortion. He says he's 100% pro-life, believes abortion has turned a society into a place where we see children's an inconvenience, on and on and on. You also gave one of the quotes, I would certainly like to see abortion illegal nationally. He also said he was sympathetic to the view that a national ban is, would be necessary to stop women from traveling across states to obtain an abortion. So he's in favor of a sort of fugitive slave act to stop abortion. So he said that as well. He blamed undocumented immigrants for everything from rising house prices, rising food prices, inflation, maybe ghosts and bad weather. I mean, he was blaming undocumented immigrants for every single thing. I think Tim Walls was really skillful in knocking those things down individually because he was speaking as a governor and could speak from his own experience. He did a great job talking about housing costs and how those actually worked. The bipartisan way to save health care was absolutely absurd. <laughs> he said most of our solar panels are coming from China. It's literally the opposite. Google the Department of Education that says 80 percent of our solar panels come from, drum roll, the United States. Trump peacefully gave over power on January 20, kind of skipped January 6th when he was trying to overthrow the government. He couldn't answer the question, did Trump lose the election? A smooth lie is still a lie. Yeah. J.D. Vance is incredibly smooth, but he said, number one, nothing memorable. There's nothing clippable yeah, in what that's... he said. They were just all smooth, bland lies. He got outdone by JD, uh, by Tim Walz, who may be awkward. He may got, it took him a while to get warmed up, but he won the debate because he actually had substance. He was relatable and he didn't go in there to slay J.D. Vance. He went in there to show himself and he showed himself to be bipartisan. He showed himself to be reasonable. Practical. He showed himself to be practical. He acted as a governor. He and a lot of people are complaining that he didn't knock J.D. Vance out and that he wasn't rhetorically cruel. But that was not his job. It was obvious that his job was to sell Kamala Harris as president. And if you're wondering, this is what J.D. Vance was trying to get out temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you, no, Senator. We have no, no, so course. much to get to. Margaret, thank I, I think you, it's Nora. important we, because we're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own Senator, for leadership. describing the legal and process. And Kamala, we and have Kamala so Harris much to get to, that Senator. Pathway. In other words, yes, they're here legally, but let me explain to you why I disagree with the law and therefore will still assert that it is illegal even though they were here legally. And by virtue of that explanation, I only respect rules and laws and regulations that I agree with. And the second moment, and if you only watch one exchange from the debate, it should be this one. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she? It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. This man turned a question about the peaceful transfer of power in January 6th to censorship. He turned it to censorship. And if you need no other display 
of how unserious of a debate this is or how unserious they are at actually interfacing with our reality, then it's this. And by the way, shout out to Coach Walls for asking the very direct question of whether or not Trump lost the 2020 election, knowing that he cannot answer that question truthfully. Very, very well done. And yes, saying that Trump left peacefully is like saying that Ron Artest left the palace peacefully. I mean, really. So let me get this straight. So if my plan is unsuccessful, then I get credit for not having completed the crime? Ooh, wow. Some attorney's gonna be able to do a lot with that. I, I can tell you that, because it is a lot of attempted crimes being prosecuted all across America. I didn't know you could get off because you failed. If you cannot say what happened in 2020, and the only reason you're there is because what actually happened in 2020 is that Donald Trump sent his supporters to hang Mike Pence. Just ask them. Yeah. Um, then you lose. And I think that, that you know, Governor Waltz had, had a lot of great moments. Tim, Tim Waltz built that perfect artifice. I mean, J.D. Vance built this perfect artifice. He was speaking as though he were running to be Mitt Romney's vice. I mean, he was, like he spoke tonight. It was, perform it was a performance that was kind of amazing and totally disconnected from the person who he's running with, Donald Trump. But still unable but still, to it say was, it was, that Trump lost the election and in 2020. In that moment, unable to say it. In the moment, I, th I think everything that he did for 88 minutes was lost and wiped out by that one one inability to tell the truth in front of a huge television audience. Because I don't care where you are on policy. And yes, it's important. We know, oh my God, it's so important. There's so much stuff to get into from abortion to the economy to what's happening right now in Israel. And so much stuff they weren't able to get into. And so like much Ukraine. stuff they weren't mm -hmm. to get into. But folks, you have to fundamentally understand the truth. If you cannot in 2024 answer that question, you are unfit for office. It doesn't matter what else you did for Two, for 90 or 89 minutes. That last minute, you cannot answer that question because the guy who's watching that you're performing for will kick your behind when you get off that stage, tells me and should tell the country you are unfit for office. And quite frankly, we don't talk about that enough. None of them can answer that question. They're all unfit. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I very much appreciate the support. And as I mentioned previously, we got membership now. Yes, it was something that, that you guys suggested and a suggestion that I took and, and moved forward with. And it's something I'm really super excited about. That's gonna give me the ability to give people early access to videos and ad-free experience and also be able to record things on the go when I'm not necessarily in my perfect environment. I have something I just wanna drop in real quick. I have the ability to do that. Also, the ability to give you guys deep dive investigation pieces, some of the stuff that may not necessarily be topical, but stuff that deserves your attention. And of course, some of the uncensored content as well, because Lord knows, the kind of stuff that I have to cut out of my videos can make pieces in and of themselves. Well, now I have the ability to do all of that.